Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Starting off over at ZDNet, SUSE Linux Enterprise 12, new features and extensions. Congratulations are in order for the fine folks at SUSE LLC. Today in Germany, SUSE announced the availability of Linux Enterprise 12. Uh, it is a much anticipated release due to several improvements. Um, the author of the article here, Ken Hess, had the uh, opportunity to speak with George Shi, product marketing manager, and Carrie Kim, director of strategic marketing, about the release and some of the new features. So this article is basically a rundown of that. Um, pretty interesting, to say the least. Definitely check it out. From uh, opensource.com, Linux computer program brings a smile where it's least expected. Uh, Reglu is an organization that has been placing Linux computers in the homes of financially disadvantaged kids since 2005. The program started in Central Texas, and we'd love to see it grow. So if you have an interest after reading this article, and there's a link to this in the show notes, as always, uh, about how uh, they did it, give them an email. So uh, basically, this is a quick rundown about how uh, they managed to get uh, Linux computers into disadvantaged homes. You know, this is fantastic. Uh, one of the you know, disadvantaged or not, you know, every child has, should have the same opportunity. They all have the same learning capability. So they should be given the same opportunity to learn technology. So uh, this is a, a great and worthy cause. So definitely check it out. From technobuffalo.com, Google is detailing the security features built into Android 5.0. Now, we, uh, I believe it was uh, the Geekinator, the last episode of the Geekinator, we talked about uh, Android 5. Uh, this is a uh, basically a rundown of a bunch of the new security features that are built into uh, Android 5.0. Some of the things that you should expect to see uh, moving forward um, with Lollipop, which is what they're calling Android 5.0. Um, it's not just uh, a matter of fancy animations and flatter design. Uh, this this release in particular has a lot of security updates. Encryption is turned on by default. Um, it's essentially the safest and mo most secure Android yet. Um, which, if you ask me, again, I, I realize this is a Linux show, but Apple has been quite a bit ahead of Android in this uh, respect, um, and we're not even going to talk about Windows phones because they're just basically non-existent at this point. But uh, you know, these are welcome features. Android really, you know, these are long overdue, should have been done ages ago, just now getting around to them. So definitely pretty awesome. Definitely check it out. Uh, from GamerHeadlines.com, Chrome thirty eight. It has officially been promoted by the browser to the stable channel. This is pretty nice if you're a Chrome user. Um, Chrome 38 is now officially available for Mac, Windows, and Linux, which is why we're talking about it here on Linux uh, News Log. This newest software update, which is 38.0.2125.101, I've never understood the way they version stuff, offers a number of improvements and fixes, which include new applications and extension APIs, plus loads of under the hood changes aiming for better performance and stability. All good stuff. So definitely check it out uh, as well. 
you know, can't go wrong with Google Chrome. From syscon.com, and my browser has decided to conk out here, so give me a second here. Percona expands support for OpenStack, increases its thought leadership role. Now, Percona is the company that makes MySQL faster and more reliable. They have uh, announced multiple initiatives to drive adoption and enhance performance for OpenStack. Uh, the company has created OpenStack Live 2015. It's a new annual conference running in parallel with the Percona Live MySQL Conference and Expo 2015 at the Hyatt Regency Santa Clara and Santa Clara Convention Center, which is actually uh, about two hours south of me. I might actually go to that. Um, April 13th and 14th. Oh, I can't. 2015, I've already got something else going on then. Uh, Percona is also a sponsor and a sponsor of and is participating in the OpenStack Paris Summit 2014, which is November 3rd through 7th, uh, which is right around the corner, um, actually. So check it out. Um, you know, I, it's pretty neat. You know, I, I try to include news for uh, things like this because I know that it, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people use that uh, a lot of open source software, such as MySQL, and, you know, they use a lot of Percona stuff. So it's all good. From iProgrammer Info, uh, Firefox OS comes to the Raspberry Pi. This is pretty awesome. Firefox hasn't taken over the world yet, despite its promise, or Firefox OS, I should say. Now we have a small effort from Mozilla to make it run on one of the most successful budget devices in the world, the Raspberry Pi. Firefox OS is Mozilla's browser-based OS. It consists of a Linux core with a UI provided by Gecko, essentially a Linux-hosted Firefox browser. Firefox OS is targeted at mobile devices, but it is suitable for any small system like a Raspberry Pi. Frankly, I, as, as cool as this is, and I don't mean to hijack this, I am more interested in trying out uh, FreeBSD on Raspberry Pi. Uh, the new version 10 that was recently released, and they have an upcoming 10.1 that should be coming out any day if it hasn't already been released. I need to check that out. Uh, they now have install instructions for running it on Raspberry Pi. So I would love to try it out on Raspberry Pi. Um, I just need to find the time to do it. Definitely something worth looking into for sure. From the register.co.uk, Canonical rolls out, rolls out a homegrown Ubuntu OpenStack distro. I can understand some of the reason why they do this, but I'm also mystified by some of the reason why they do this. Canonical is spinning its OpenStack, its own OpenStack distro to simplify deployment of Linux clouds and ensure its place in an expected cloud winners club. Mark Shuttleworth's firm is expected to roll out the beta of its canonical distribution of Ubuntu OpenStack. Uh, they're also promising rapid setup of its cloud using an automation tool. The goal is for Canonical's cloud to install on your preference of storage, networking, and hypervisor where it will manage and monitor setup. Configuration is via a web-based UI and is supposed to make things simpler than either fiddling with the bits yourself or paying an expensive consultant to do it. So, you know, I, I understand, like I said, I understand some of the reasoning, but at the same time, it shouldn't be that hard to roll your own. Uh, anyway, that's my, those are my thoughts on it. Uh, that will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then.